Okay, this video, I'm going to explain about mechanism of precipitation. So, what happens is that the first step, we have a nucleation process. Okay, either nucleation process can be either occur spontaneous or by induced by uh, seed particles to get the thing started, such as dust, another crystal, or glass fragment. Okay, after the nucleation process, okay, to form a large particle desire. For gravity analysis, the particle growth mass take place. So, what is meaning by nucleation? Nucleation occur or happen when individual ions, atoms or molecules coalesce to form nuclei, which is the small particles, come together to form a colloid particles. Okay. Usually activated by uh, or induced by adding dust particles crash uh, on a vessel or sea crystal. So nucleation occur we form a small particle. So if you have more nucleation process, so you get a colloid particle. Okay, rapid cooling means many nucleation sites uh, when you have slow cooling yield a few sites on crystal. So when you need increase the nucleation, it lead to more number of small size colloid form of crystal and it leads to absorb the impurities. So that's why we may reduce, you need, we need to reduce nucleation process. We need to more particle growth after nucleation process in order to get a crystal. Okay, because we need crystal particles, not a colloid particles. Okay, so you understand that precipitation occur when we have a nucleation process, then uh, particle growth. If you have nucleation process dominance, you get a colloid particles. But you when you have nucleation and particle growth, particle growth have when these nucleation sites comes together and form a large particle, so we have crystal particle, which is what is our need in gravimetry analysis. Okay, during this process of precipitation, okay, uh, we need to do the digestions and we have peptidization processes. So these two I already explained in the last. Uh, the first uh, video, but I'm going to explain it later after I continue with contaminants of precipitates. So, contaminants of precipitate will occur during the process of precipitation and after precipitation. Okay, so first we look into co precipitation, which is a process in which normally soluble compounds or constituents are carried out from the Solution by precipitate. So it will cause the precipitates to be contaminants. Okay, we have two types of core precipitation. The first one is occlusions and inclusion. The second one is surface absorption. The third one is ice more surface displacement. And the last one is post precipitation. Okay, the core precipitation of other ions occur during first precipitation throughout the body of the precipitate means that the foreign ion presence during a precipitation may be incorporated into the crystal structure of the precipitate particles throughout their growth okay this is when the foreign ions incorporate into the crystal structure so the second one is called precipitation at the surface of the precipitate. It means that the impurity is found on the surface of the precipitates and it occurs usually especially with gelatinous precipitates. So this is different between occlusion and inclusion. Occlusion means trapping of impurity with in the crystal. Example here, water may trap in the pocket when silver nitrate crystal are formed. So, it happens in between the crystal structure. But for inclusions, trapping of impurities within the lattice of 
crystal. Okay, example here, potassium in ammonium, magnesium phosphate. So, usually you put your crystal should be ammonium magnesium phosphate. But during the process of crystallization, the potassium ion may replace the ammonium base. So, it equals as inclusion, trapping of impurity within the crystal lattice. So, usually occlusion and inclusion impurities are difficult to remove. So, that's why you need to do the digestions. But sometimes not very uh, effective. But this is some of the steps that you may use in order to reduce this type of precipitations and purification by dissolving and re-precipitating may be helpful means that after you precipitate and then you dissolve back and then you re-precipitate back in order to reduce occlusion and inclination contamination okay next is surface absorptions which is where you have high relative supersaturation, you have increased nucleation, so will many small crystals will be formed, usually we call it as colloid, and more surface area, more surface absorption, and will cause more impurities to form because large surface area, large, more impurity can absorb on the surface. So, more or large surface area in the precipitate leads to more surface absorption and more impurity. So, to reduce this type of surface absorption contamination, it can be reduced by proper precipitation technique and digestion and washing process. So, this is the analogy for surface absorption. Okay, let, uh, let's say you take one chalk pieces and imagine is the large crystal so for the large crystal you only have four surface area so and then you imagine that you break this chalk piece into two okay now the large crystal are become small and it have eight surface area so super saturation increase nucleation occur precipitate will become small crystal and convert into colloid form and increase the surface area so, if it has more surface area, so the chance to buy more impurities is very higher. Okay, you need to imagine this. So, to understand the concept of small, uh, small particles have large surface area. Okay, next one is post precipitations. So, it occurs when the precipitate is allowed to stand in contact with mother liquor. A second substance will slowly form a precipitate with precipitating reagent. So, when you do the precipitation process, you add the precipitating reagent. So, you need you want your analyte to be precipitate. But if you allow in your analyte in the solutions for the sometimes, so the Another reage, another uh, sample that in there uh, we call as interference we slowly precipitate with your precipitating reagent. So we have two examples here. So where calcium oxalate is precipitated in the presence of magnesium ion, magnesium oxalate does not form immediately precipitate because it tends to form super saturation situation. Or the example two, copper sulfide will precipitate in acid solution in the presence of zinc ion, but eventually zinc sulfate will precipitate. So you want copper sulfate, it will precipitate in the acid solution in the presence of zinc. But because you uh, allow it to stay in contact with mother liquid in the solutions in the several uh, in several moments, so eventually our zinc also precipitate to form so zinc sulfide. So this is me by post precipitation. Okay, and the last one is isomorphous replacement or sometimes we call it mixed crystal formation. When two compounds are isomorphic, it means the same type of formula and crystalline in similar geometric form and same lattice dimensions. So one of iron can replace another in crystal easily. Okay, example here, in the precipitation of magnesium as magnesium ammonium phosphate, okay, potassium has nearly same size as as a ammonia, ammonium here, 
So it can replace it to form magnesium potassium phosphate. You need to form magnesium ammonium phosphate. But because of potassium in the solution have nearly same size with ammonium, so potassium will replace the uh, ammonium place and form magnesium potassium phosphate. So this one is the contamination. Okay. So this is another contamination may occur, which is mid crystal formations. Uh, like uh, the same as uh, isomorphous replacement and then mechanical entrapment um, this is one is quite uh, similar to oxidation and inflation so you can read but so this extra uh, contamination can you can read by yourself so this is the method to prevent and eliminate co-precipitation so you if you have surface adsorptions co-precipitations so how to eliminate this uh, co-precipitation so you can uh, do the digestion process okay you wash the solution containing a volatile electrolyte so you wash your opponent precipitate with the uh, volatile electrolyte or you can use re-precipitation so for occlusion and mechanical entrapment is called precipitation. So to minimize to or to eliminate this type of co precipitation, you can do digestion. You can use a dilute solutions or you can slow the addition of reagent for the to make sure that we get our favorable precipitations. Okay, so we already know what how, how precipitate is formed and then we have uh, contamination during precipitation. So, as you can uh, uh, remember, okay, the first step in gravity analysis, you do the preliminary treatment and then you do the precipitation, the second part. And then during the precipitation, you may contain co-precipitation process. So, to avoid co-precipitation, you need to do the step 3 which is digestion of precipitate. So this digestion is process to keep the precipitate within the mother liquor for a certain period of time to encourage densification of nuclei. So usually during the digestion process, a small particle dissolves and the larger one grows. Okay, this process helps to produce larger crystals that are more easily to be filtered from solution. So this is a good, uh, uh, I mean this is a good step in order to give a good precipitate form. So what is the good of digestion? Okay, digestion will improve the purity and also the filterability of the precipitate. And it's usually done at elevated temperature in order to speed the process of agglomerations and coagulations. So digestion process is actually a phenomenon so when a small precipitate which present in the solutions, which is washed precipitate, is allowed to grow to form a larger crystals. Okay, when heated. So we need to form large crystals. So you, that why, that's why we need to do the digestion process how to do it to do it so you don't uh, you do it at a elevated depth. okay so the very small particles okay uh, have higher surface energy and the small particles tend to dissolve and re-precipitate with this peptidization process on the surface of large crystals so the small particles are coagulate or agglomerate using a coagulant to give a betrayable amorphous mass so the small particle can be often coagulated by heating, stirring, and adding of electrolyte. So, in order to get a large crystal particle, so you need to do a digestion because this problem. Okay, and of course we need to uh, do the digestion in order to reduce peptidization. So what is peptidization? Peptidization is the process by which an alkylate colloid revert to its original dispersed state. So means that if you get a small particle which is colloid, this colloid particle can revert to become a soluble band. That's why you need to have a large particle because this form of colloid is usually uh, 
not easily to be filtered and it can leach from the dispersion medium. So how to overcome peptidization? So you need to wash with the solution containing electrolyte that volatiles when the precipitate is dry or ignited.